Hello friends out there, viewers and subscribers. Once again, I'm coming back to you with another video here. Now, on my last video for New Wave Synth Pop uh, Part 13, I said that I was going to be doing a different genre, which is going to be Italo Disco. And I do have that one coming. That's going to be my favorite one. But I have another stack here as uh, part of my Duran Duran collection. And I've been wanting to do this one for a while because it's releases from Japan and with the OBI wraps around them. So I've been wanting to show these. And that's actually going to be part nine of my Duran Duran collection and probably the final, at least for uh, official releases, because I found just about uh, everything else I could find out there on Discogs. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I have here as far as from Japan and a couple of issues that were uh, made. I'm going to show those at the end of the video that aren't out of Japan, but they do have the Japanese writing on the covers. And I apologize if the audio is not synced with my video perfectly. It's a little bit off. I'm not sure why, but the quality of the camera is pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and get started here. And the first one I'm going to show is going to be the same one that is on the thumbnail. So this one right here, you're talking about the first record that they put out uh, from Japan and how fitting night romantics look at these guys on the cover how different they look back then and I remember getting a hold of this in fact I even had Rio first then I didn't even know they had a first album which I ran to warehouse and got the cassette got used to that one and then a friend of mine had this and I'm thinking where are you getting this from so I had to borrow that one I think I had it for a year but back to the issue here OBI. I believe these are Japan's version of a hype sticker that uh, the U.S. and others put out that tells some information and remixes, whatever about the record. This is Japan's version. And usually when you find a release from Japan, it's going to have this on it. That has to do with 45s and CDs as well. It's hard to find these that are still intact because a lot of us just didn't keep our records in plastic and they got torn or thrown away. Um, but the releases I have here, they're sitting on my lap, are uh, great shape. On the back here is this picture of them. And then on the inside is their lyrics sheet. And then there's a whole sheet that tells all about this record. But if you own this release, they didn't come with this. I made this. And the information sheet, I made it too. I just stuck it inside. But the lyrics sheet that are in, that is inside this, that did come with it. So if you have this release here, then you're very fortunate to have it because it does have the flip song of Careless Memories, which is called Kenada. I think that's how you pronounce it. it. Might be a girl's name. Hauntingly beautiful song by early Duran Duran. And this one, of course, has David Bowie's fame, Duran Duran's cover version, a little bit faster, but they did so well with it. And of course, Girls on Film, Planet Earth. The next one here is the Union of the Snake. And remember when that song starts off, it's got those uh, high pitched sounds and you knew what that song was when you heard it. And here we are with that slick looking OBI. I don't know what this says. I'm sure it's all about this record. I just don't know what these words are. I believe they're called characters, but uh, there's the back side of it as well. I got a lot of these from one seller on Discogs. That's where I find most of my records is on Discogs. If you've never heard of it before, you got to find out. It is the biggest global marketplace for records, CDs, 7-inch singles, just about anything you want that has to do with media and that style. And if you get used to using Discogs, you can create a want list and sometimes get a whole bunch of stuff from one seller if they happen to show that they have that. So that's what I did here. The next one is, gosh, the glare, sorry, um, Arena. And I remember when this came out, this was about the last record I started collecting from them because I got into Depeche Mode heavily and uh, a bunch of other bands that were around um, 85 and 86. So, but I had to get this one here, live performance. And uh, look at that nice wrap. Where is it? <laughs> that nice wrap right here. mint condition these this sellers he sold me mint condition um he used the word foxing which i think is just a little bit of molding i think that's another word for molding i don't know if you can see it but here is rio 
and it's a few spots on her face might just be from humidity but uh, yeah here we go again this beautiful OBI wrap um, it's on there pretty good too and then here's the other side probably one of the most recognizable album covers ever I would put it up there with Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon with uh, the pyramid I forgot what they call that um, with the rainbow going through it just up there with that where you just recognize what the album is right away of course it's Patrick Nagos beautiful girl a bunch of other albums you can recognize them right away but this one here is another one. notorious let's get the glare out of there the uh, OBI here fits with Simon Lebon's head here um, if you can see it there just the three of them this time I don't know who this is on the back maybe that's for you to say but they were uh, they were great with their choices of beautiful girls in their videos and pictures excellent choice on models uh, another I think this is the US release of their first album which did have is there something I should know and in the video Boy, they got Simon really tan on this picture, too, and Nick with the orange hair. When that song came out on MTV, it, to this day, it just kind of comes right out of the box. Please, please tell me now, and the camera's shooting in on their face. And then there's the uh, OBI on the back side. Very nice production as well. Their single, Tiger Tiger, I don't know why... Uh, this made it as a single, maybe just for listening. It's certainly not a dance club hit. But the song itself is uh, really nice. It's slow. It's one of their slower songs on the uh, um, Seven on the Ragged Tiger album, as we know. But on this release here, we've got the Reflex, Union of the Snake, New Moon of Monday, and Is There Something I Should Know. So you want a club dance track uh, release here with the tracks on it. Then this was the one to get. And then here is that beautiful... OBI wrap. They did their first album, got them all new romantic looking. Second album, uh, they had the uh, white pants, the fedora hats. That was really fun, making making a staple in time. This cover reminded me of what they did with the Beatles back in the 60s by putting them in suits instead of leather jackets. Suited them up really nice and handsome looking. Definitely was uh, eye candy for those onlookers as well as this picture right here. You want to talk about a handsome band right here is these guys. And it's been said others had boy bands. Well, we had Duran Duran. These guys aren't any joke. They got this picture done really good. And this isn't even the original uh, picture of this album. There is uh, a first one. And this is the one that was decided on. I have a picture of what the original um, Seven and the Ragged Tiger album was supposed to look like. It was much brighter. But anyway, we've got this gold OBI right here. Wild Boys, a tempo up there with mixing in with Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood pounding tempo and Simon sings a little bit different in the song if you remember but they're shouting wild boys wild boys in the video I believe it was the most money that was ever spent at that time on a video production rather post-apocalyptic looking but here's the uh, OBI rap on there I don't know what any of that says but I'd like to look it up maybe I'll find out someday and here's their releases on the back side Gotta love the glossy covers, the plastic sleeves, definitely not cheap. I've always loved that picture of John. When I was 13 and saw this picture here, I wanted to be him so bad. So I went out and got a fedora hat, the white pants, in which you can see everything because if you sit on something on a chair, they, they just get dirty. But for pictures and stuff, they look really nice here. Yeah, I wanted to be John. The height, the bass guitar, I mean, he's got some funky bass lines especially new religion oh boy but this is a really nice obi on this one and then there's the back side there was a couple of different carnival releases i think this one might be also 
No, it's not the Canadian version. I'm not sure, but nonetheless, this one's from Japan. There's a green or maybe a blue and white one from Netherlands and then from the UK. All right. First album here. Where are we? I didn't know, wasn't really familiar with them when I got this. I was still learning their names, learning who they are, what inst instruments they played. But I think my standout song on this album right here was Careless Memories because I used to drive my Corvette with that song playing at high speed. You have to. That's up there with Flock of Seagulls, I Ran. But I love this silver OBI on here. Friends of Mine, another great one too. But then you've got, oh, what was it? The first song that was on Side B, Night Boat. Another great intro on that. There's not too many of these floating around out here. And I grabbed this one on eBay and it was listed as mint condition. So I grabbed it. I think it was 50 bucks. I had to have it. And so here's this nice strip right here big thing and I think that is yen 2500 yen I mean that could be 10 bucks for all we know I'm not sure on the conversion rate but I had to have it and now I got it so almost at the end of the 12 inch size LP Japanese releases I got this one here this is someone's really nice attempt at a Japanese release because of the OBI right here. And it goes in this way instead of slipping on all the way around. This one has, is kind of a folded card and it goes in and uh, back at Century Hall. But the weightiness of this, it's a perfect production. I mean, this wasn't cheaply done. And I do like bootlegs. I do love official releases. It's just somebody's somebody's idea that they came up with and if you see on my other videos I have a lot of that stuff I don't mind I love it I love bootlegs why not they don't make a whole lot of them so I grab them when I can but there's two discs in here I'm just gonna grab the edge don't get mad at me but there we have clear Trust me, I don't play my records. I don't have the time to. I just collect them and show them and own them. I had one, uh, one viewer reply with an LOL that I don't play my records. I don't. I just don't have the time. I mean, I've already heard all this stuff, so I don't just sit down and listen to an album. But this was a great production right here, so I had to have it. I'm going to slip this. If I don't get the plastic on there right now, it'll never be back on there. But that's that stack right there. Now I'm going to move into, careful, this. These are my seven singles. And I showed them in another video, but because this is Japan related, I'm going to show these. Just maybe there's new viewers to my channel. Girls on film. I got to tell you, I miss this look of theirs. Back with the moppy hair. They were very similar to... Uh, I think the guy version of Bananarama just because of the hair and the looks. So I'm not talking about music, but just for the style that was coming out back then. And quite a few other bands were doing the same thing with the colored hair and it was all going out. I missed that look. I wish it would come back. Wild Boys again. Now this, where are we? Right there. Um, it's got to be uh, spelling out Wild Boys. Now, these Japanese releases just have a front picture. There's a cardboard inside and then the Toshiba uh, EMI green sleeve, which Ireland also did green. But for these ones, and when I received these, I thought, what? I'm not getting a full jacket. It's just the front picture. And I guess I forgot years ago that when these came out, it's just a front picture. So I thought I was getting ripped off there as a copy, but that's Japan. And then here we go here. And I like how they made... Where are we? Uh, the girl here has like the six band member. So you got six pictures here. Who misses Andy and Duran Duran? Don't we all? It's just, it just feels complete having him in there. So there's the backside. 
Which one was this? I don't remember. It doesn't even say on it. This is... Oh, it's Rio. So, back in the 80s, I'm 17. It is 1986. If I remember. 1986. I go to this used record store called Warp Records in the Bay Area in San Leandro. And I'm there shopping around. This guy had a lot of great rarities. And I look up on the wall... And he's got all these Japanese releases of Japan from Japan that I'm showing you right here. One that caught my eye, which is a picture from their first interview ever, which is on YouTube, and you can watch it. And I think it's uh, John that's smoking. Nick is, I think, 18 years old, maybe a couple years older than that. I think he's the youngest band member. But I saw this on the wall. And I'm thinking to myself, where are you finding these? How come I can't find them anywhere other than here? And they were expensive. And I wasn't about to trade my whole collection in, but this one here is Planet Earth. And just the front picture of the sleeve there. Of course, this one hadn't come out yet um, in, the, in that store. But he didn't have this one, but uh, I ended up getting this one on Discogs. I got to remember too that a lot of what I'm showing you here, by the time it was 1984, they were moving on. So it's been a long time. A lot of years have gone by, hasn't it, friends? Here is, uh, is there something I should know? But I do miss the 80s. I tell people, even those who were from the 80s say it was the best time. I think it was the best time. Everyone says that about their generation, but it was a fun time. Even young kids today, they say, it's nothing fun out there. How about All She Wants Is? Love that song. And I always say you can mix this in with uh, Information Society, Pure Energy. It would mix perfect. And there's uh, Japanese characters on there. Hungry Like the Wolf with Careless Memories on the backside. I think this is called the Skyscraper release. What that's got to do with the song, I have no idea, but they're in all their white and black clothes. God, they look awesome. I remember buying all the magazines that I could. Cream Magazine, 16, Tiger Beats, just to get their pictures. I had them all over my walls. Posters, too. I mean, who didn't? They were uh, sort of like the Fab Five at the time. Screaming audiences. Union of the Snake. And then there's the characters on the bottom there. More to go. A View to a Kill. They got to do a score of a James Bond film. And we remember it with the loud orchestra hits from Nick Rhodes and uh, meeting you with a view to a kill. They're on the Eiffel Tower in France with cameras. Powerful song. If you're going to do a James Bond theme, it's going to have to be powerful, I think. When Carly Simon did Nobody Does It Better, it fit. And with this one, A View to a Kill, I think that was with Roger Moore. For that time, when that came out in the 80s, it just blasted through the radio. We, uh, we just loved it. Another one, Reflex. I don't know what's on the back side. I don't remember. Kind of don't want to open it up. But if it's come up and see me, make me smile. The only time I've ever seen them do that, at least in their early years, was, of course, I think it was the Hammersmith Odeon. Their version of Cockney and Rebel was amazing. And then, of course, Simon takes a break to sit down and Andy's playing his beautiful guitar. John's wearing the fedora, and the camera zooms in on that real beautiful Asian girl. Back to John. Back to the girl. Back to John. Great time it was for videos. Hungry like the wolf. Look at that. Striped shirts, head wraps. A little bit of Japanese affiliation there. Covering up Andy, I'm sorry. but So this is my collection. I mean, there's more to go here. I Don't Want Your Love. Really great song. I mean, how could you miss out on it? And when you see this, we know. 
exactly what it is. I've never seen another cover with a heart and an X through it. So I don't want your love. A little seven inch. I like the little seven inches. The 12 inch singles, the LPs, the seven inch. And because uh, seven, in, seven inch singles had covers that were different from the 12 inch singles, such as that. And boy, this painter sure know, sure know how to um, paint beautiful women. That is such an 80s look of that kind of painting. It really made a staple in time. And I love on here the tape marks. When it comes to um, signs of wear, it shows the age. It shows it's an original, and I don't even mind record store price tags. I leave them on. BPMs and DJ this, that, and the other guy, I take them off with a blow dryer. I take the record out, but you can use a blow dryer on just the cover, and you can take um, stickers off if you're careful. But what a pretty looking girl. And it took me a while to realize that uh, her legs are kicking up over her head. A flower and a girl's hair. Stunning. Now these two aren't from Japan, but they're Japanese related with the characters on the cover. So I had to get them. And if you know what this says, I'm interested. The song on this one is Virus. And it's this little boot right here. Clear vinyl. And then lastly, this is full of pictures from the movie. Inside here is a huge booklet and with the record inside, but I wanted it because I like this right here and also that right there. Where is it? Right there. That is it, friends. That's part nine of my Duran Duran vinyl collection. It's probably going to be the final for a while because I'm moving on to other things. Um, I'm catching up on a lot of Italo Disco that I lost back in the 90s. I'm not even going to go into that story of how it happened. But I had a huge collection of Italo Disco. Uh, powerful, ethereal, heavenly, spacey uh, synth pop out of Italy, Brussels, France, Spain, and in Germany. It was huge in Asia, huge in Europe. Did not make it here in the U.S. So I'll be showing you that video for sure next and I got a lot of it, so especially colored vinyl on that one too. So if you like my videos and you want to subscribe and see future productions, I will get them out to you. Hit the like button. It supports the channel. And I'd like to hear from you. Tell me your thoughts. What do you think of all the stuff that I show on my videos? I'd like to hear from you. Let's chat. So thank you for watching. Cheers for next time.